Number five then from the 2013 Higher Maths Paper 1. A line passes through this point and is parallel to this line. Right, well, if it's parallel, I need to know this gradient. Rearrange it into the form of y equals mx plus c, because it's only in that form that you can spot the gradient. It's certainly not 5. So 3y, leaving that, would be negative 5x plus the 6, which doesn't really matter in this case, because it's only the coefficient of x I want. Divide both parts by 3, so it's negative 5 upon 3, and that's 2, which I'm not interested in. It's this part, that's the gradient, y equals mx. The gradient is negative 5 upon 3. So popping it into y minus b is mx minus a using this point. It passes through this point with that gradient. Same gradient because it's parallel. So y minus the y coordinate, I'll just pop that into a plus, is negative 5 upon 3 times x minus the x coordinate. I'll pop that into a plus as well because I was subtracting a negative, subtracting a negative. Get into the fractions, 3 times this side leaving the negative 5 to multiply this side. And then they've got them all in the form of x, y, number. So bring the 5x over as a positive 5x. That's a negative 5x over as a positive 5x. 5x plus 3y, bring the negative 10 over as a plus 10, plus 13 equals 0. That would be answer 5.13d. Number six then, what's the remainder when you divide this cubic expression by this little linear term here? Synthetic division then, let's pop that down. Coefficients, they're all there. I've got one for x cubed, I've got three for x squared, I've got minus five for x, and I've got negative six for the constant at the end. If I'm dividing by x minus two, it's the two, it's the root, I'll put through this. Then it's just add it down, multiply it up, add it down, multiply it up, add it down, that will be a positive 5. Multiply it up, that comes to a 10. 10, take away 6, gives me a 4. Which means the remainder, because this part gives the remainder here, the remainder is 4, which is answer C. I'll put it here, 4. Remainder equals 4, which is C. Number 7. Find this indefinite integral. So just integrate this. What have we got then? Well, it's not ready to go because I've got a product here. I'll have to multiply it out into separate terms. So that'll be 3x squared plus 2x dx. And then now they've got it in separate terms with the coefficient of the power. It's simply a case of add 1 to the power, up to 3. I'll show the working. Divide by the 3. Add 1 to the power, so it's up to 2 divide by that 2, and don't forget the plus c. So that's just going to be x cubed plus x squared plus c, which is b. Question 8. Here we've got a recurrence relation. It tells you the term u1 is 11, and there's two statements, so it's a multiple selection. So that means you'll need to work out each of these and decide whether they're individually true or false. The first part says u0 is 9.1. Well, if that's u1, I'll have to work it backwards. I'll have to put it in this way. I'll have to have 11 for u1 would have come from 0.1 times u0 plus 8. So rearranging that, 0.1 of u0 will be 8 away from the 11, which is 3. So u0 will be 3 divided by 0.1. It's a fraction as part of a fraction. Simply multiply the top and the bottom by 10, and you'll get 30 over 1. So u0 is 30. And well, that's quite significantly different from that. So that means the first part is wrong. Not your answer that's wrong. That's right. This answer's wrong. The second part says the sequence has a limit. Well, yes. The multiplying number there, the coefficient of that term is a proper fraction, not 0.1, is a proper fraction, this value is less than 1, which means the sequence does have a limit, so that part is correct. So I'm looking for only answer 2 is correct, or only statement 2 is correct. Only statement 2 is correct, that would be C.